You look at this, records are actually close. Height's a little bit different. The big difference, the age. Denise, even though with all that fight experience, is still a young fighter. To Michael C. Williams. On Paramount Network, Bellator MMA now moves to the flyweight division set for three five-minute rounds. We'll introduce first the blue corner at five foot seven, weighing in 125 and one quarter pounds. Her professional record stands at three and two, fighting out of Prague, Czech Republic, Petra Chaskova. And across the cage, her adversary out of the red corner at five foot two, weighing in 125 and one half pounds. Bellator Kickboxing's reigning flyweight world champion returns tonight to the cage. Her MMA record early on stands at one and one. She fights out of Amsterdam, Netherlands. Introducing Denise, Miss Dynamo Kilos. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Kevin McDonald. Back up, back up. Can't believe we gave Kevin McDonald a live mic. That's a bad idea. No. <laughs> Ready to fight? Ready to fight? Let's go! The suddenness of the victory in the last performance was eye-opening. Some of the top flyweights had had trouble with Jessica Middleton. Well, the one thing when you're looking at Denise is young in MMA, but man, she's so experienced in kickboxing. She's the Bellator flyweight champion in kickboxing. Her kickboxing is so technically sound, and the way she goes about throwing various techniques in combinations makes her special. She used the judo background, despite the 47-3 and three kickboxing record, she used the judo background to win that last fight. Which is just making everyone go, oh, God, she's got some exactly. ground game, too. That's not good for me. And he's very comfortable in the clinch. This is where the throw came last time. And it's the same thing. It head. It's a, a variation of a head and arm gets into the position. This is very similar to what you used to see Ronda Rousey doing. Yeah, exactly. Using right. a Kezakatami with that judo technique, getting to the top position. Right. Good job of saying, you know what, I'm not going to sit there and try to get myself out over the top. I'm going to set back, let go of what I have, and now start to maintain position and do damage. She might have been able to step over there if it wasn't for the fence. Yep. The one thing that I always I saw out of all of Petra's fight, Petra will do everything she can to win. She will bend the rules. She will grab the fence. She will do these things. And right now, if she's smart, she's going to take that right leg and hook it over the hip of Denise Keyholtz, which is going to help get her position. If you're not cheating, you're not trying? I guess Hold not. Fence. Now, keep in mind, when you hear her warn about the fence, you got to think of the fence, even though we can see through it, as if it's a wall. You can't use your toes or your fingers to grab a hold of it. You can push off it as if it were a wall. Yeah, Denise right now is trying to. She's looking for the same type of submission she had in her fi first fight in Bellator. But she needs to think about the positioning of Petra. She's not on her back. She's on her side. That means that she can have the ability to change this position quickly. There you go. And nice, take that with Nice you. little right hand that puts her right down. Stop. Don't you wish some of the fighters listened to the rules the way I listened and learned them from you? About the fence and all that? <laughs> sure would be nice. Of course, there are a lot of fighters that know the rules. Knowing the rules and following them are not the same thing. Uh, as, as you said, sometimes if you're not cheating, you're not trying. You see how slow these shots from Jessica are to develop. That one got through. Next week, Bellator MMA. Back stateside, Michael Chandler's back home in St. Louis. Will not get the fight for the world title, but he will fight Brandon Gertz. This is going to be a great one to see. Bellator MMA presented by Miller Lite Friday, April 13th at 9 on Paramount Network. And A.J. McKee tries to stay undefeated next week against Justin Lawrence. He really has had a nice renaissance, a nice second stage of his career. He caught John Teixeira on the wrong night. But gave him one 
incredible fight. It was a very close, very tough fight. Justin Lawrence has just improved. He, yeah. the, he was the kid. He was the guy that everyone was saying, this is going to be special. And he ran into some hard fights and he got into some trouble. He has come back. He has reestablished that he is a very difficult fighter to deal with. And he is going to be the hardest fight that AJ McKee has ever had. And you know the tendency, you know, fans will be, oh, he lost a couple of fights. I'm going to, I'm going to turn my attention somewhere else, forgetting when a guy's 23, 24 years old. And John, there's going to be more of that now. The guys are starting so young. There is, and you, you, you cannot expect people. Everyone's going to develop at different times, and sometimes it takes just more time, more cooking in that oven of training that is going to put that fight in the thing. Denise Kehoe's doing it. She's just sitting here trying to, to work on counters. She's waiting for Petra and countering everything she has. Watch your fingers. Close them up. The head movement of Kielholz and the slow developing shots of Chaskova is, is a mismatch it's here. It's a bad combination yeah. if, you're, if you're Petra. You can see what Denise is trying to do. She's trying to do a, what we call a dip and rip. She's dipping the head, rolling it through, and coming with her right hand. And it's come close a couple of times. If Petra continues to leave her head in that center line, one of those is going to connect and it's going to hurt her. That one right there is very close to connecting and causing her a problem. In the first five minutes, the late opponent change not affecting Miss Dunsley. Look at right here what you're seeing. This is normal for a judo player, grabbing the head, bringing that leg across, bringing your opponent down and getting in what is he called a scarf holder in Japanese, a kezakatami position. But she needs to be Round careful and have that back flat on the ground. Say that in Japanese again. <laughs> kezakatami. Impressive. <laughs> So I made reference to Lucia Riker before, and if the name doesn't mean anything to you, undefeated for a decade, kickboxing, Muay Thai, but you probably remember her, but it still doesn't sound familiar. She's the one who knocked out Hillary Swank in Million Dollar Baby. She was the villain, but man, she's such a sweetheart of a lady. She was so good, so dominant. You know, never lost in boxing, never lost to a female in kickboxing. Her only loss was to a yeah, male. I was gonna say, why do you have to asterisk that? That's why. <laughs> That's it. And it wasn't just uh, an anybody male, it was a Lumpini champion from Thailand. Big risky moves right there. Very risky. But you know what, I like it, man. Petra's, she's trying. Couple of swinging, spinning back fists right there. She's trying to get after and go, and it's gotta give her credit. Her background is largely boxing. She has a very linear style. She's, she fights tall. She, with because she is really tall for the division you see her putting her arms out there which creates some problems for her opponent getting into her denise is continually trying to counter strike when really she should just start opening up creating movement with her hands and then landing the kick just like that well it's almost like you've seen this before <laughs> a couple times such an enthusiasm about Denise Kielholz in this next part of her career. Well, everything about Denise Kielholz is, is good. She can fight like the devil. She has nothing but upside in everything she's doing, and she's such a great person. It's someone that fans are going to fall in love with once they get to see her personality. She's the Bellator kickboxing champion. Later on tonight, we're going to see another guy who has some MMA aspirations, but right now he is on top of the American kickboxing scene and on top of the welterweight scene as the welterweight world champion Raymond Daniels will defend that welterweight world title. That is next here on Paramount Network. Talking about the human highlight reel of Ray Daniels when it comes to kickboxing. Don't you, you think something's wrong with the vertical hold on your TV because he's just constantly spinning. <laughs> Nice front push kick there by Denise. She, count, counter, counter, it's counter. exactly what it is. She's just countering the whole time. You know, moving, you know, Petra's moving against the fence because she can't control the position. And Denise is slowly keeping her, backing her towards the fence more and more. I expect Denise to start opening up with a couple of combinations which are going to drive her in the fence. And from that point, she can decide if she wants to continue with the stand-up or grab her and start to take her down and put her into another position on the ground. 
We saw this with Ed Ruth earlier, and yeah, you see a difference in skill levels. But that last minute opponent change, and no, Lena of Chivicola is a very specific fighter with very different skills. Yeah, from and, and, and very different styles, and that's really different when you're when you're working out and you're you're scouting someone, and you look at the style of what Lena does. Her stand up is very polished, and the way she enters in is a polished way. Petra doesn't have that polish on her. She's she's more of a a stiff and almost awkward fighter at times, and sometimes that can throw you off. Nice back spinning, but good attempt, job by Petra. Good job, down. good job by Petra to continue on, get that throw. She got into her body. Nice job by Denise to get herself right back up and actually control the position. Now landing knee strikes. Giving away four inches in height, and again, take that with you. Little left hook coming off. That you know, those are the things that those are the differences in fights at times. You've got to always look. If you have the opportunity to be offensive, do it. Don't wait. Great example of that. We're going to see Benson Henderson coming up in the main event. He's only been knocked out once. You were there. Rafael Dos Anjos did it, and it was in a scramble. It was. And look at if there's if you talk about a guy that's resilient and durable in a fight, Benson Henderson is it. But like we've talked about before, Sean, I don't care who you are. If someone puts a punch on the right part of your chin, you can go out. Or near your eye, you can see the damage now. The left eye of Denise Gilholz. Yeah, she's got a little bit of a mark there, a little bit of swelling, but she's absolutely the one delivering the bigger power in this round. And she's kind of going for broke a couple times that spinning back fist, but she hasn't had the right distance. Well, that spinning back fist is exactly what put that mark on her eye. Petra Chaskova still standing after two. A lot of times in MMA, you'll see fighters earlier in their career, and they have short fights and a lot of wins. You can learn more from the longer fights, and Denise Gilholtz has been able to swing a lot of different clothes. 35. <laughs> you know, you, you're absolutely correct in that short fights are nice. But you need time inside the cage. The more time that you have inside the cage where you're effectively working against someone in the fashion that's happening right now with Denise, this is only good for her progression as a mixed martial artist. Just talking to different guys, and Michael Venom Page was one. Is like, is it better sometimes? Do you want to be in a longer fight? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Nope. Look at it. No matter what, no matter what, if you're in that cage, yes. there's a danger of you getting hurt and losing that fight. So if you can end it, we end it. But sometimes the fact that we're in there for a long time and exchanging and seeing things and improving on what we're doing, that's going to help us in the future. It's going to be great to see MVP back in there against Dave Rickles. That's a, oh, that's well, a fun fight. Is that not a good one? It, it, you, and you just, I don't know if they're in London, if they're going to let Rickles bring his dinosaur or his club. It would be, listen, I'd, I'd like to see it at Customs. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, why are you here again? It's certainly, it's not going to fit in the overhead. Chaskova is trying to, he's using a ring, using the reach to try to keep her at bay, and she's done some damage. I've really been impressed with Chaskova yeah. and what she's done in this fight, especially coming in on, look, at one week's notice. She's doing an outstanding job against a very talented stand-up fighter. You know, Denise is the Bellator flyweight kickboxing champion. It's for a reason. She's 47-3 and three in her career in kickboxing. She can kickbox. Petra is there with her. Again, the judo that won her the first fight, that was really the first love for Denise Gilholz. She was on the national team at a crazy young age, as a teenager. Tells you what kind of athlete she is, where she can take and do multiple forms of martial arts and be top level in everything she does. It just, again, going back to Lucia Riker, makes you realize how ahead of her time was she. Lucia Riker was so good, so dominant, so powerful for a woman. Because it, it's very difficult for lighter weight people to have power because it's just, it's a weight factor, it's physics. And Lucia Riker had such power that she hurt, you, you look at her, her record compared to every other fighter out there, she had KO, TKO, KO, 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 TKO. Very few decisions because she just could generate incredible power 
And those are big gloves. <laughs> yeah, those were big I mean, gloves. Really nice counter there by Denise. Took the kick, actually blocked it, took it well, controlled the leg, and then came back. Biggest thing I'd like to see is head movement as she comes in. Move her head so she gets inside of Petra. Do work and then bring yourself back out and re regroup. Tell you, full marks here for Jaskova. Really? Still trying to come forward here in minute 14. Yeah, she. I mean, she's throwing and she's trying to throw hard. Denise Gilholtz has taken damage, but she's been coming forward from the jump here. Now she took that one spinning back fist in the first round. That's what she got the mark from on her eye. But Kashkova has been actually touching that with that right hand jab. She's been touching that eye up a little bit more, and that's why you're seeing more damage on it. Denise gets to, right now she's getting into this form of throwing one twos, ones, one twos. She needs to start thinking of opening up those by moving her feet inside and throwing her hands while her feet are moving. She's going to be more successful. Nice right hand by Denise right there. That caught her flush right on the chin. Overhand left, she's so yeah. much faster, so big, much faster. Big left hand by Denise, then she went off bounce, stepping on the foot of Kashkova, but both of them are throwing, and they're throwing hard. Really, really am impressed with what yeah. Petra has done here on short notice, coming in here fighting a stand-up fight against a stand-up fighter. A far more competitive fight than I think anybody had a right to expect. Yep. Well, you said it right. You're going to catch Denise Gilholtz. You want her now. You want her in her third MMA fight. Absolutely. The judo there, throw right landing. back to it. She loves Kezuka Top. I think she just wants to hear you say it. An impressive performance from Petra Chaskova. She goes the distance with Miss Dynamite. We'll get the decision next. It took Denise Gilholz just 76 seconds in her Bellator debut to beat Jessica Middleton. This one goes the distance. How did it turn out? Michael C. Williams knows. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges now at cage side. All three judges, Eric Colon, Doug Crosby, Brian Miner, all three scoring the same 30 to 27. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Denise, Miss Dynamite. No trouble with the change of opponent. No change with the reach. Congratulations for the loser of the fight who put up a very strong one here against Denise Gilholz who goes to two and one.